let's just go ahead and move forward now and do some additional troubleshooting. I've been looking at the remaining B plus string that I'll show here on the schematic and you can see that our B plus voltage is a little on the low side. Now again my input voltage I'm referencing is 115 volts AC to match the original uh, documentation. So I should really be somewhere close to 90 volts. They uh, call out a plus or minus uh, 20 percentile on the schematic. But if you go back and look at most schematics for the All-American 5s, 90 to 100 volts is what you would see on the B-plus rail. Let's do some troubleshooting and see if we can understand why the entire B-plus rail is a, a little less than it should be. You can see I've got the uh, B-plus rail somewhat uh, highlighted here. I think it's accurate. We can start down here at the bottom at the uh, rectifier itself and you can see the voltage is already called out. And then as we uh, work our way uh, north here you can see the uh, B plus rail. Uh, we end up going through that uh, tapped output transformer that I uh, spoke to how it works to uh, help mitigate hum by an out of phase relationship plus the uh, filtering of the uh, resistor and the coil itself acting as a choke. And then you can see here the uh, voltage called out on the plate here, 115 volts. And then when we get back down to uh, this junction point here, the 90 volts, we've got a reduction there due to uh, R15 here at uh, 1200 ohms. You can see here there's another dropping resistor, R7, 220K, that's called out on the schematic that should allow 56 volts of DC back over here to the plate of the 12 SQ7. You can see here it's uh, pretty straightforward. It continues to uh, run across and then we end up feeding the uh, 12 SK7 90 volts back to the plate as well as the uh, screen grid. Let me highlight those two locations here. And then again we work our way over to the 12 SA7 and uh, we've got the same thing here, 90 volts and uh, 90 volts. So you can see there's not a lot that can go wrong other than, of course, you could have one of the uh, open transformers. In this case, uh, we don't have that. We've just got low DC in this entire rail that I've measured, and it's uh, consistent within uh, one volt at all those points. So uh, let's look back here and uh, kind of see what gets in the way. I think you guys, uh, experienced troubleshooters, already know most likely what the issue is. But for folks just getting started in the hobby and do some basic troubleshooting here. So if we back up here, I think our trouble spot's going to be right here. It's part of the uh, filtering network to uh, clean up the DC. So that resistor resides in the center of the two electrolytics. And that's what I would guess to be the problem. You can see it's called out at 1200 ohms, but uh, most likely that resistor has drifted high. Thus, we're reducing the uh, DC voltage here on the rest of the rail back over to the uh, plates and the uh, screen grids. You guys can see the voltage drop here across R15, roughly uh, 42 volts or so. So that is high. If you just do the math here, look back, we should have uh, 121 minus the uh, 90, so somewhere around 31 volts. So what would be suspect again would be this uh, 1 watt resistor right here that sits in the middle of the uh, two capacitors. Let's uh, turn the power off to the uh, receiver. Let me uh, discharge the uh, capacitors 
and then we'll measure the uh, DC resistance here and uh, see what we have. So you can see we've got everything discharged here, reading uh, zero volts now. Let's flip it over here and look at uh, DC resistance and see what we have. And you can see this resistor is reading high. So I'm about uh, 2.1 uh, K, so 2100 ohms. So just going back and double checking myself here just to make sure the uh, B plus is still low. And uh, you can see we're still around uh, 76 volts. And again, we know based on what we just saw that this uh, resistor is reading high. So let's put a resistor in parallel with this resistor to uh, drop the resistance back down closer to 1200 ohms. We won't be exact. I'm going to put a 2.5K resistor here in my parallel and I'll show the math here at the bottom of the screen and that takes us uh, just under uh, 1200 ohms and uh, you guys can see the uh, calls in effect we we'll should see the uh, DC voltage here rise closer to uh, 90 volts or just under And you can see our B plus now is uh, back in line or closer to where it should be. So there's still more stuff going on that could impact the uh, voltages that we're seeing here. Again, we're just trying to be plus or minus 20% from uh, 90 volts. So we're definitely uh, extremely close. So let's do some additional uh, tests here beyond this point and uh, just see what else we can uncover. And the voltage drop now of uh, 28 volts roughly as compared to uh, 31 volts on the uh, schematic. So you can see we're uh, definitely uh, very close here to the uh, called out numbers and well within tolerance. So to recap, we know resistor R15 is high. And again, you can see the impact that that has on the uh, DC voltage on the B plus rail in addition to how it changes the uh, the current consumption itself on the uh, B plus rail is indicated in the math below. I've got the uh, receiver powered back up. It's going to be hard to see this but uh, R9 is tucked in back here. It's uh, if you look at the schematic here, I'm showing in the picture and picture 150 ohm. It's a half watt resistor rated at plus or minus 10 percent because uh, they want the stability here to kind of keep the uh, bias in check. So uh, we're not far out of spec here. You can see we're at uh, negative uh, 6.5 again, that being the voltage drop across this particular uh, resistor that runs from the cathode to ground. Let me uh, turn the power off and uh, discharge the electrolytics here. And let's measure the DC resistance. I would expect that our DC resistance has drifted high as well based on what we see. But uh, let's just confirm that. And indeed, you can see that it is uh, running a little bit on the high side. So uh, 240 ohms or so. So that's going to be a problem for us. Let me uh, turn on the calculator here and uh, clear the entry here. Let's just do the math. So we should have, uh, what, 150. And then we'll take away, we'll call it uh, 241. I can see what I'm doing. And then we'll divide that by 150. And uh, you can see there if that's uh, showing up here in the glare. Try to get it where you guys can see that. We're about 61% uh, high. Let's uh, do the same thing we did here on the other resistor and uh, throw in another resistor in uh, parallel and uh, see if we can bring that value down and uh, look at the impact that it has to the uh, voltage at that point. This resistor reads about uh, 425 ohms, so we'll put it in parallel. 
and uh, you can see that gets just north of our 150 is uh, denoted on the schematic so uh, we'll be in good shape there let me uh, flip this thing back around and let's look at the uh, DC voltage at this point now and uh, see what impact that has you can see the uh, voltage dropped back down which I expected to see and then we're at 5.43 and the uh, schematic calls for 5.6. Now again, we're going to still have some impact. We need to look at the uh, control grid resistor as well, R8, at uh, 470 k, because they'll play each off of each other actually. So um, this number may change as well based on the uh, the value of uh, resistor R8. All right, since we're looking at the uh, voltage drop here across the uh, cathode resistor in the state that it's in, let's do the math and uh, see what the uh, current flow is through the uh, 50L6 in the state that it's in right now. Again, all the current will flow through the uh, plate in addition to the uh, screen grid back through the uh, cathode. So doing the math here, if you look at the schematic, since we already know what the voltage drop is, and again, I measured that in our uh, real world at uh, 5.51 volts, and we know the resistance of 155.1 ohms. You can see I've just plugged those numbers in. We'll use Ohm's law, so the current will be equal to the uh, voltage divided by resistance, and uh, you can see that puts us at about 35.5 milliamps which is almost spot on here compared to the uh, schematic. All right, let's take a minute here and just talk about some other things here that um, I haven't touched on to this point. We'll start here with uh, C16. So you can see it's nothing more than a uh, coupling capacitor. Again, it resides between the, uh, the plate here. You can see uh, that first audio amp, that uh, 12SQ7 here. And it runs over to the uh, grid here of the uh, 50L6. So some things to look out for if you're doing troubleshooting. If this capacitor would short, you can see we would have a big problem. AC voltage from the uh, plate there, pin number 6 of uh, the 12SQ7, would actually be applied to the grid there of the uh, 50L6. So that would create some big problems. If it was extreme, we would damage the tube and uh, most likely the uh, cathode resistor would fail. In addition, if it was minimal, uh, we would probably hear notable distortion out of the uh, output tube. So just keep that in mind. Now, just the opposite, if uh, C16 opens, of course, the uh, receiver would be dead. It wouldn't allow, you know, signals to pass through to the uh, final output tube. So again, we were talking about R8 just a minute ago. We know that the value of R8 that I measured is reading a little bit high. So what we're going to see if that value of R8 increases, the uh, audio will decrease and uh, possibly distort. So that's the importance of making sure that we stay within that uh, plus or minus 20% uh, there that's uh, called out on the schematic. You guys saw the importance of R9 and uh, how that impacts the uh, bias voltage. So again, that being the uh, cathode resistor, and uh, we saw that with the uh, value increasing, the uh, bias voltage will also increase. And if the bias voltage increases uh, too much, that's going to lead to uh, distortion. And uh, should that value drift high enough, it would actually uh, cause the uh, output tube to basically fail to operate due to the uh, low plate current. So uh, keep that in mind as well. But uh, if you go back here and look at uh, 
C17, which uh, resides right here from the plate, in some cases back to ground. You'll notice it's an audio bypass capacitor. And its primary function is to keep the high frequency components out of the plate circuit of the 50L6 in our case. And you'll see the values of these capacitors, they'll vary from manufacturer. And the reason it's done is to kind of shape the uh, tone of the receiver. A lot of folks, you may see, will change those capacitor values to uh, increase bass or treble. There's a few trouble spots here to take note of. Should the capacitor open up, of course, the uh, volume, you know, would most likely increase. And it uh, creates a potential for the uh, oscillation to occur as well. Now on the flip side, if it shorts, that's where we have a real issue. That's when uh, R9 can be damaged along with R15. And we could even take out the uh, primary winding of the output transformer T3 would uh, potentially open up. So that would create a uh, catastrophic uh, failure and one that uh, I've seen many times. It just shows the importance of not powering up the uh, radios like I'm demonstrating here without uh, getting the uh, capacitors replaced. And if the uh, primary of T3 again should be found open, the receiver would be dead. And with the uh, screen voltage only applied to the uh, 50L6, the uh, screen grid would be glowing red hot or the uh, tube itself would fail due to uh, stress. And again, if the uh, secondary of T3 would happen to open, which is rare, the receiver would be dead, you know, and ditto for the voice coil. And all that can be verified just uh, looking at uh, DC resistance measurements. So that's where we're gonna leave off today. I appreciate you folks uh, watching this video. Hopefully you found it uh, helpful for folks that are uh, new out there making their uh, first repairs. You guys uh, stay well, take care, and um, hope to have another video posted uh, soon. We'll continue working our way back to the uh, second detector, that being the uh, 12S Q7 next and uh, just look at some of the problems around that area, if any. Thanks again for watching.